introduction part i am skipping it since he has already covered it this so i am starting with materials so for why for uh, the immersion the binder which we need we can use any type of bitumen which as described in the is 73 which is the code for the binders it can be used with or without flux means we can use some additives also depending on the requirement or we can use it plain and uh, the another choice is the choice of emulsifying agents it also depends on the requirement like uh, on which portion you are going to apply the emulsion so to make that emulsion you need a specific type of emulsifying agent so as per it, is triple eight seven the cationic emulsion has been divided into five grades like rapid setting has been divided into two grades one or two medium setting has only one grade and for slow setting it has been dividing into two grades but for anionic emulsion as per is three one one seven they have not bifurcated in the form of one and two they are give a broad domain like rapid medium and slow setting so what is the requirement for uh, uh, ideal bitumen emulsion? So first of all, as we know, it is the combination of the water, the binder and the emulsifying agent. The first requirement is that they should be mixed thoroughly. So it should be homogeneous. It should not be like that, that their different phases are separated. That's where emulsifying agent comes into picture. It basically helps in keeping the two phases, phases together. Since the bitumen emulsion is a combination of two immiscible liquids, which are two different, like bitumen and binder, they won't mix with each other. But the emulsifying agent has the work to make them blended with each other. So a proper emulsifying agent would be such that, so that the bitumen emulsion would be homogeneous in nature. Also, another thumb rule is that within one year after the manufacturing date, it should not show any undispersed between after thorough mixing you know that if we keep it emulsion for some time it may be possible that the phases are water may come upward and between downward that but after thoroughly mixing it should not show any undispersed between second the code has also given the different bind different emulsion characteristics on which we can divide it if you have if you have different types of emulsion so you have to divide it like uh, either it is the rapid setting or medium setting or slow setting into which if, if we go into detail like which rapid setting is one one or two so you have to conduct some test like residue test viscosity wise sevol test sevol viscometer you have heard it is the most common test coagulation storage stability and these type of tests so these are the codal guidelines to be so uh, means a qualifying criteria for an immersion to be divided into different parts RS12, MS and SS1 and SS2. This one shows the criteria for the anionic immersion where since it has been divided only into the three categories like rapid, medium and slow setting. So it uh, it is the criteria or different test limit or specifications to be fall into under this category. One thing I want to highlight that in the first row, the, visco the viscosity, the code has given the similar viscosity to all three types of emulsions. So if you are using an anionic emulsion, so there is no, suppose we are talking about plain binder. So for plain binder, they have different viscosity grades. Like if it is VG30, then its viscosity lies between 2400 to 3600. For VG40, it's between 3200 to 4800. But in case of emulsion, this viscosity limit is similar in all the cases. So how to take the sample to test the bitumen, sorry, immersion. So for which code has given some guidelines, like if it is kept in drums or barrels, so how do we extract that? As I've already, already uh, told you that if it is, it's been there for a longer period of time, it may uh, cause a phase separation between the two. So what you will you do? <clears throat> you will roll the container to and fro for a period of two to three minutes, like, like a circular and also the sidewise. So at least you have to do five revolutions for that. And you can do the first two revolutions in one direction, again two in opposite direction, and also the final direction, final revolution. After that, if it is kept in drums, you can do it like that to make it homogeneous. If it is coming in bulk, so what you need, it means for you need, you can't do it by manually. You need force circulation or air agitation. So you can do it if it is in the bulk. And also 
if the sample has been delivered so it is recommended to take the sample from the emulsion within 24 hours and it should be best if you test it within 7 days from the date of drawing the sample first uh, the most common test and most important test for any vitreous emulsion is the viscosity test which is which is conducted by an instrument known as sevold ferrol viscometer for that what we need it uh, we <coughs> the viscometer has the oil tube this oil tube is it is called oil tube because it can be used for the viscosity of other oils also in our case the oil is emulsion we are testing emulsion so we are pouring our emulsion in the oil tube second the lower end of the, at the lower end of the tube we have a locking system a nut system so that we can screw or unscrew it when to extract the emulsion from it i will be telling the each and every step in the subsequent slides there is a there is the provision for attachment or detachment of the strings for the cork to facilitate its removal from from the upper tube to the lower beaker in which we will be connecting we need a stop watch we will need a pipette if you pipette you have already seen in all the chemical laboratories we also need a bath water bath water bath is required so that actually since the emulsion is a very low viscous liquid so the temperature plays a major role in this so we need a temperature controlled water bath around it so that the your sample is at constant temperature throughout the test this is how a sevold ferrol viscometer looks like many of you have seen that <clears throat> it is not very rare thing so it is like uh, this circular box and uh, it has two handles this upper portion it gets detached to input the sample in it in the left it is the temperature controller this is how the this elevation looks like in the this is the left one is a sketch of the oil tube which i was talking about at the upper end of this there is the what there's provision for the water bath the oil gets surrounded by the water bath which which is responsible for maintaining the constant temperature throughout the test at the lower end it is a cork this cork is removed when the emulsion is allowed to flow at the right figure it is a collecting beaker you can say uh, or a cylinder or measuring jar it is kept below this uh, viscometer oil tube so that uh, the emulsion gets flow from this cork from this the end where the cork has to be removed and it gets collected in this beaker you can also see a graduation mark at the top of it this graduation mark is the limit up to which the this uh, jar should be filled to get the viscosity of the liquid of the emulsion in our case it is emulsion uh, there are some provisions like uh, the the water bath should be 0.5 cm above the top end of this uh, what we call oil tube <coughs> there should not be uh, temperature variations uh, for the room temperature shall be between 20 and 30 degrees celsius depending on the various part of the countries you are testing first the oil tube should be clean with a solvent such as benzene since you all know that the benzene and the trichloroethylene as the common solvents for hydrocarbons especially the bitumen so we will clean it and uh, first what we do we take we took the emulsion we pass it through that 155 micron sieve and the test is conducted on the material which is passed from the 150 micron sieve after this after passing that material we pour the whole emulsion into that oil tube after that before we will put the cork at the bottom these are the guidelines there to and how to pour, put the cork that is not very important so we put the cork so that the, when we pour the emulsion into the tube it may not fall it may not fall from the lower end we fill it up to the brim means at the top position of the oil tube then we will keep it stirring it is well stirred with the help of thermometer i will be showing the pics after this we are then we maintain the temperature of the water bath the temperature at which we are doing test doing this commonly it is doing at 25 degrees celsius means you all i have already tell it is between 20 to 30 so the mean temperature is the 25 degrees celsius so here i was talking about this is how the viscometer looks like when we open it from the top in the middle one is the oil tube and around which is the empty space where water is filled up to the that label and after that here is the lower part 
portion where the cork is fitted is the lower portion of the o of the viscometer so it is screwed or unscrewed depending on the where whether we want to extract it or not it, it is how the water bath gets filled up to here and the, it is maintained at the required temperature the temperature is uh, set by the help of temperature control we got we have shown it at the starting this is how the immersion is poured in the oil tube so what we do after filling it after filling it up to this level we after we open the nut from the lower portion so that the immersion falls from top point to the knee, to the lower one lower where we already kept the measuring jar which I, which i have already shown so what we do we open unscrew the lower part and the immersion is allowed to fall as at the moment where we unscrew it we start the stopwatch and the emulsion starts flowing and it gets collected in that jar i have also shown that graduation mark so the mark the time the time in second up to which the emulsion is filled up to that mark that time is noted and it is been been manipulated with the help of the calibration charts and which has been reported as the viscosity of the specified bitumen emulsion here here is there two thermometers they are put here so that the you can assure that the what what temperature you are testing it on and here is the jar on which it is collected is a stopwatch we will stop it as far as it touches the gradation mark and we will correlate it with the viscosity of that emulsion next test is the determination of the residue while sieving so what we do this is the test which tests the residue means we are using a sieve we are sieving it and the material which is retained on the sieve is known as residue so it can be calculated by two methods which i will discussing one by one first method is the determination of residue by sieving what we know need is for this is 600 micron sieve a glass disc a oven an oven a balance a container we need the solution and distill for distilled water we also need two sol solvents these are the two solvents are xylene and acetone these basically are also the what we call solvents they are well known for dissolving the hydrocarbons in them so what will have what they will do i will tell you with the test what we do first we wash the sieve with xylene and then with acetone this is the this is we are doing because we want to clean the sieve and such that there is no dusty particles on that also there are no bitumen particles like hydrocarbons on the sieves or between the pores it may significantly affect the affect the percentage residue on the sieve because is it may clog or it may bond or stick with the already present molecules on the sieve so that you will get erroneous results of the residue so what we do we wash it with xylene and acetone after that we put it on the dish and we put it in the oven so that it gets dry we remove it we and cool it and we wait it so we now know the weight of this that dish plus sieve the oven dried weight after that what we do we took the 4 liter sample of the emulsion we put a container we it take a container we put a sieve on into this and we pour the 4 liter sample first as we already i already told before using any emulsion you first have to gently agitate it so that it gets homogeneous so what we do we took we take the sample and we we sieve it through that 600 600 micron sieve into the container whole 4 liter sample after that it may depend it may be possible that the the material you are using the it is high viscous so it may not be possible that it may pass from that sieve so there are different temperatures depending on the viscosity of the emulsion if it is highly viscous it is done at 50 degrees celsius and if it is low viscous then it can be done at room temperature easily so when whole of the emulsion has been passed from the sieve so you as you already know there should be some residue in the form of the since we have bitumen globules inside the emulsions so so it should be have the residue on the sieve after that what we do these are the two solvents which we used this is how we are cleaning the sieve with the with the help of these 
xylene and acetone this is the, we are pouring the residue sorry emulsion on the sieve to get the residue after that what we did after the residue gets accumulated on the sieve we constantly wash it with the water again and again until the clear water comes from below the sieve so then we know that there is our residue there is no like second phase remains on the sieve so we constantly uh, pour water on it until the clear water comes from the from below the sieve and uh, what then what we do what we take that sieve and that plate that is dish assembly and we put in the oven for two hours so that uh, all the liquid portion get uh, all the water and anything else get evaporated and we get the solid residue we weight that residue and we, then we use some mathematics to calculate the percentage retained on the on the sieve which is known at the, as the residue i told you there were two methods the first by sieving there is another method to calculate the residue by evaporation so in this what we need we need some glass beakers glass rods glass rods are needed for gently mixing it nothing else. there is no another reason for using glass rod they are of glass because the emulsion don't get stick if you use steel rod or wooden rod it is maybe possible that the material get stick stuck on those so they will not give the accurate results we need balance and oven in almost every test so here is the procedure we took for 50 g of that between emulsion we put in three beakers why are putting three beakers just to get the replicates the test can be done in three at in one beaker also but we are uh, to be very sure we are using three replicates for it we take 50 g for in the three beakers and mix it with the help of glass rods after that we put that beaker in the oven at 163 degrees celsius for two hours after two hours we take it out and we again stir it so that it may be possible that some um, phase separation may take place so after two hours we took it out and we stir it for some time then we again put it in the oven for one hour after that we take it out and we cool it and we weigh the beakers in the pictures you can see we take this type of beaker with the glass rod and we weigh it up to 50 50 grams then we took it after 2 hours and then we agitate it after that we uh, again put it for one hour and they take took its weight so so to know the bitumen content is just a simple formula twice a minus v where a is the mass of beaker and bitumen together and second one is the mass of beaker and rod in the first mass the rod was also there it is missing here so it was a mass of beaker rod and bitumen and the second one is the mass of beaker and rod so after extracting the residue from this evaporation method the residue which are we are get we can we conduct some test on it also like most common test which we do on the residue are the penetration test ductility test and its solubility in the trichloroethylene or we can use other solvent like benzene also so another test is the storage stability test so for when a material a sample of bitumen emulsion is kept for a long time so as i told you it uh, gets separated so it is not uniform so it may be possible that the upper part of that container the things are different and the bottom part things are different so to check to check its uh, efficacy we do the storage stability test how let's see how it's done we take two cylinders they have diff they have the aforementioned dimensions Uh, again the two cylinders are taken just for the repeatability we need a glass pipette the glass pipette is actually needed in uh, every test of emulsion because it may be possible that while pouring the emulsion it uh, suppose you are pouring for 100 g but it is it falls down an extra amount has been uh, poured in the sample like 110 ml so how you take it out if you take it out by uh, taking the beaker and again pouring it 10 g so the emulsion may get stuck on the boundaries of the beaker so this that is not will give the exact result so best thing is to take the glass take the pipet and to suck it out directly by by dipping the pipet in the solution 
or in our case it is, it is emulsion we need balance also we need glass beakers okay glass rods for ice rolling just for stirring oven and balance are the common things this is how it's done we this test is done at the room temperature varying from 20 to 30 first we bring the bitumen it may be possible that the bitumen emulsion gets delivered delivered in the hot environment or its temperature is 35 or 40 it may be possible first we wait for it to bring it down to the room temperature after that we take 500 ml from two glass cylinders for the two replicates 500 ml each we airtight the cylinder with the stopper and it is kept undisturbed in the same condition for 24 hours you will be understanding why we are doing it we are doing it so that after 24 hours if it is having a phase separation let it be happen then we will check whether it is happening or not so what we do is uh, this type of uh, beaker we are using here you can see there are two nozzles one at the top and what one at the bottom so it is self explanatory since we are checking if it if things are same at the top and bottom so we take 50 gram from the top and 50 gram from the bottom in different beakers so that now one beaker has the material which is at the top of the jar second has the which is the bottom of the chair so now we have to check whether these materials are displaying the similar properties or not what we do we suppose we have emulsion and we have to check whether it is same or different the best method which can we do is to calculate its residue so we do it by evaporation method which is the most common method we put it in the as i recently i explained that we put it in the oven for two hours then we remove it after some time after two hours then we agitate it then we again put it one hour then we calculate the residue so storage storage stability is nothing is this is the difference in the storage residue between the two samples one is which is taken from the top and one which is taken from the bottom if it, there is no difference between those two those two then we can say that there is no phase separation is taking place and we can use it as it is otherwise if there is a significant difference so we can say that this emulsion is subjected to phase separation very frequently so we have to mechanically or very carefully agitate it before mixing it so that we should be sure that it is now it is homogeneous now we can use it another test is particle charge so you have to check whether it is uh, cationic emulsion or anionic emulsion. It is uh, basically based on the understanding of the electrostatics. What we need for it? We need a current source. Just a sec. We need a current source, a battery. What we need are rheostat. Rheostat you have uh, studied in 11th or 12th with a device is just used to variate the resistance so that you can manage the flow of current if resistance is more then the flow of current will be less which is self-explanatory and we need an emitter actually it is used to uh, measure the charge flowing in the circuit the current in the circuit we also need two stainless steel plates and two glass containers of 500 ml capacity the plates we need just to make uh, one plate as cathode and one as anode this is a simple procedure you will be doing in your you have also do, done in your childhood also with the use of that battery we take a sufficient amount of vitamin emulsion in a glass container what we do we put these two plates of these dimensions dimension may vary depending on the your choice the standard it is 25 mm by 75 mm they are immersed in that in that emulsion and they are connected to a 12 volt battery so through a switch, a rheostat and emitter is also used. Emitter gives the current, a rheostat is used to adjust the flow of current. It is dipped to a depth of 25 mm and they are marked as a positive or negative place or cathode or anode plates. So we close the switch, we adjust the rheostat and the current starts flowing. It, we should be cautious that it should not be more than 4 milliampere. This is how we done. We pour the bitumen emulsion in the container 
and here we lower these two plates and they get dipped in the emulsions vitamin emulsion then what we do we open the circuit and remove the plates and we wash it how you know that which is cationic which is anionic this is how it's done if a continuous opaque film of the vitamin gets the stick on the negative plate or the cathode plate or and a clean vitamin means at the cathode the film is very opaque it is we don't know what is inside it but at the anode it is a clean vitamin clean it is not much there is no vitamin on there it is very vitamin free plate then we can indicate that it is a cationic emulsion or positively charged particles if the reverse of this happens then we can see that it is an anionic emulsion it is a very simple test which can be done at uh, everywhere so just to know whether it is cationic or it is anionic another test is the is to check its stability to whether it can be mixed with cement or not so or how it is done we need two sieves one is 1.4 mm sieve another is 150 micron sieve 150 micron stands for 0.1 or 1.15 mm sieve so we need two sieves they have these aforementioned dimensions we need a metal dish a steel lot you know that for just for stirring balance oven cylinder and a pen and of course if we are checking the stability with cement we need cement procedure is starts with this the water content of the emulsion is adjusted to make it to 50% after that we took the cement we sieved it through 150 micron sieve and after that from the sieve part we took the 50 gram from it to that 50 gram we take 50 gram and we add 100 ml of emulsion then we start stirring it stirring at the rate of 60 revolutions per minute means one revolution per second we take uh, cement and we add 100 ml of emulsion in it after which after 1 minute of mixing we add 150 ml of boiled distilled water then we again distill it for 3 minutes so after that uh, the ingredients are maintained at the room temperature you have noticed that all these tests uh, are normally done at room temperature so this is the advantage of emulsion we don't need hot mixing after that after making the solution 50 g cement 100 ml emulsion and 150 ml water after carefully stirring it and keeping it for 20 degrees celsius we will pour it through the 1.4 mm sieve and then after pouring it we put the water on it continuously rinsed it means rinsed means we just washing it so that water gets passed and that material becomes clean with the distilled water after that it is put in the oven so that the liquid parts gets evaporate and we get a residue so from where we get that residue is known as coagul coagulate and its value is known as coagulation value it is calculated with the help of the same difference in weight to the original weight so we get the coagulation value next test is to check whether how effective is your emulsion and how, what is its coating ability so it is we need a mixing pen is to mix it we get can be a pitch kitchen pen or any pen you need we need a mixing blade mixing blade seems strong but we can stick simple knife or simple spoon also need two sieves 19 mm and 4.75 mm as you can see that the 19 we are using 19 mm and 4.75 mm so it is test on coarse aggregates since coating ability is checked so it is its coating on this coarse aggregate has been checked with this test constant head water spraying status mean that means the water should be sprayed at the same pressure so that the constant head is maintained you have read in the fluid mechanics also what is constant head with the thermometer for checking the temperature balance prepared oven these all are common in all the tests and we we did since limestone is the standard or most commonly used aggregate so we uh, do it on the limestone aggregates you can check it with other aggregates also suppose you are working with the, like dolomite so you can check it on the dolomite also depends on the aggregate which you are using and we use calcium carbonate also procedure starts we take 460 g of limestone aggregates in the mixing pan and we mix 4 g of calcium carbonate dust for 1 minute just we take the aggregates we pour 4 g of cu3 and we just constantly mix it so that we are trying so that a uniform film of dust has been made on all the aggregates clean aggregates are taken and then we are 
making a film of dust on all the aggregates after that we take 9.3 ml of water to the and we mix it to this aggregate and again mix it so that a uniform wetting wetting is obtained since if you take an aggregate and put water and dust on it so it it produces a coating on that a wetting coating on that of that dust after that what we do now we add the 35 gram of bitumen emulsion and we mix vigorously here now are you getting the idea what we are doing we are creating the worst situation for it suppose if you have taken 460 gram of aggregate and directly put emulsion in it so it may be possible that it may bond easily and there is a good coating on it but here we first we are mixing those aggregates with water and dust so that it gets slippery and it may not get perfect coating so the we are preparing the doing this test for the worst conditions after that what we do uh, we mix those three things with the bitumen emulsion and we treat the pan so that if there is any excess emulsion which may get fall from that so just the, only the coated aggregates with emulsion remains in the pan here we basically comparing it how we are comparing now we have prepared the and the mixture of emulsion and the aggregates with the dust so we divided into now two parts one part in one part we are taking it out in the second part we are doing something else so first half we are taking it out we took it and put it another place on the second half what we do let's see the other half of the mixture we just spray the water on it continuously spray the water on it so that it gets and that the emulsion get strip off so we are here checking the effect of moisture also the first half we are not checking the effect of moisture the second half we are spraying the water on it and we are just spraying on it then again tilting it so that extra water falls off again doing it again and again after that after doing again and again first time it may happen that the water get the drained water is dirty means some emulsion thing is there second half it becomes less dirty after some time so that the when the coating becomes permanent of the aggregates then that water is going to be able to drain off that coating and that uh, so the water will fall clear clear water will start flowing then we know that we have to stop it here so now we have two types of mixture one when we mix the cco3 dust with the on the aggregates and we add emulsion and we mix it and directly kept it out in the second part after doing these four steps we just spray water continuously on it we both took both types of uh, these uh, aggregates and put it on the absorbent paper this is basically we can see a visualization test there is no mathematical index for that we already know that there is no mathematical index, index for it you have also done the stripping test in the lab on that what we do we coat the aggregates we put it in the water we boil it and we manually decide it is 80% coated or 95% coated similarly here we have to rate it in terms of three parameters at good fair or poor so code has given some uh, means some guidelines to get some idea because uh, this uh, judgment of good fair or poor may vary depending on person to person suppose for me the fair is if it is coated fully for another person is fair is it fair is it may not coated 80% 90% is fair so code has given some idea about it what what it has given if the film if the aggregate is fully coated by the emulsion then we can say that it is good when the coated area percentage coating area is higher than uncoated area it is called as the fair and when uncoated area is higher than the coated area then it can be called as poor so it makes easy for you to decide it's a visualization test we can compare it on the first half where we not applied the water and for second half also next is a simple test to just to a small test is to take if your emulsion is miscible with water miscible means it gets uniformly homogeneously blend with water or not it is very simple test you take 150 ml of water in a beaker and add 50 ml of emulsion in it and we kept it at a temperature of 20 to 30 degrees celsius and we just left it like make it stand for 2 hours and and we examine it for if there is any coagulation happens or due to this for 
do, if it is allowed to stand for two hours so we can for we, we will check that if there is any appreciable coagulation of the vitamin content happens in this span of two hours